I just want to first welcome you so much. Thank you for coming to the State of the Snail 2024. My name is Anna Millay. I'm the Executive Director of Slow Food USA. And I'm so glad you're all here. We have a great meeting set up tonight, a good interaction, a good conversation. So I wanted to step back and zoom out a little bit. Like, where are we here now? It's 2024. Um, how do we get to where we are now? So in 20, between like 2017 and 2019, the <laughs> main program of Slow Food USA was Slow Food Nations. And I recognize a lot of you were there and remember that event in Denver, amazing festival, so dynamic. Of course, 2020 COVID <laughs> happened, 2020, it's like the year burned in our memories. Um, a lot of things pivoted. I think all the chapters were, were facing a lot of pivoting, changing, trying to figure out who we are if we're not an events-driven organization. And at the national office, we really spent time focusing on the network, focusing on the chapters and seeing what is happening in the chapters. How can we weave chapters together? How can we connect people better? How can we support chapters and really make sure that this is a grassroots organization that starts with a chapter leadership and what's happening in food on the ground. And all of that informs our national strategy. So one thing that we saw was that often a lot of chapters, even national associations and other groups are isolated. Um, I, it wasn't just COVID. I think this has happened for a long time. We're kind of, um, we like to do things on our own. We like to create systems from scratch, create brand new language to describe who we are, create brand new logos. <laughs> like uh, The snail has different accessories all of a sudden. And that's like amazing and creative. And sometimes it feels like we're a bunch of little kayaks, like going in every direction on a big lake. It feels very scattered um, and it feels like we're not pulling in the same direction. So at the end of 2021, we started a process to create a theory of change. Um, Dan Miller and I, who's here tonight, hi Dan, um, helped design this process and we got a lot of network input. We had focus groups. We went through in detail all the annual reports we had depth, in-depth conversations with the board and staff, and we um, identified and created a theory of change. Now that took a lot of time. And um, of course we're all doing things in the meantime, but in 2003, early last year, we finalized the theory of change. I hope you've all had time to look at that. And we rolled it out and you know, I think I wanna pull out three main things in the theory of change. One is a focus on work pillars. So we've identified biodiversity, biocultural diversity, education, and advocacy as the three primary areas where Slow Food believes that we can make a big impact on the food system. Those pillars are aligned with the Slow Food International pillars and their focus, biocultural education, uh, biocultural diversity, education, and advocacy. The other thing we talked a lot about is like, what is our role in the social change ecosystem as a grassroots network? And we identified four roles. Um, we are weavers, we pull people together. We are builders, we create programs and engage people. We are storytellers. We you know tell the story of food and the cultural um, traditions that happen with food. And we are disruptors. We, we challenge the system, the status quo, and really help people understand a different way to approach food. In the theory of change, we also really took some time to unpack how food is always political and systemic. And, and I, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute, but I think we sometimes get some pushback. Oh, slow food, keep slow food out of politics. Slow food is not political. And we really wanted to understand that food is always political and that we need to engage at the systems level to make real change in our food system. So I really believe that strong movements are aligned movements. If we can use the same language, do aligned programs, address the same core problems, we will start rowing our kayaks in the same direction and making a much more um, a much bigger impact 
on the food system. So I'm really hoping that the theory of change is a practical tool that you as chapter leaders, as boards, as, as other folks in the Slow Food Network can really adapt um, to help you with strategic planning, to help you with board member orientation, um, and to help you really use a common language for what we're doing as Slow Food. The theory of change is kind of like the big picture, right? The high level 20,000 foot view. So you can't just end there. So in the last um, like half, half year, we next turn to creating a strategic plan for the next four years. And this is where we are now. We've had a, a board retreat. Thank you, board. We met um, in Charleston. We had a staff retreat in Chicago. And we have produced a document that we'll share later for the 2024 to 27 strategic intentions. I'm a little hesitant to call these plans because they're ideas, they're a direction, and some of them need funding in order to actually um, happen. So I wanted to just take a moment to thank the board, thank the staff, thank all the networks for your input and your strategic uh, ideas as we get to where we are right now. So the rest of the call will really be about this strategic direction. And I hope that as we present this, that you will see the work of your chapter resonating so strongly and the work of you know what's happening in your local community reflecting in a really clear way in these um, intentions. Um, I wanted to pull out three threads that are woven throughout all, all of our intentions. Slow Food is a grassroots network, right? We talked about that. Our, all of our work is intended to build capacity for the network, to power up areas where there is already local energy and to weave leaders together. So we never wanna be in the position where we're like making up programs here in Brooklyn and then just, okay, go. We, we really look at where is there energy in the network? How can we amplify that and connect those pieces and move together uh, in the same direction? Slow food is global. Like I said, I think sometimes we're like stuck in our small communities. And the beauty of slow food is like, it's global. It is in Canada, Mexico. Today, I talked with someone from Japan, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Mexico, Canada. Yeah, all over the Turtle Island, all over the world. And um, we're trying to create ways for you leaders, local leaders, to more and more connect globally and to make sure that we are staunch allies to our network and to really show up to collaborate. And the last piece is, you know, we are joy and justice. We've talked about joy and justice a lot over the last few mm -hmm. years, but really want to understand that no one is free until we are all free. It's good, clean and fair food for all. And we really want to focus on equity, inclusion and justice at the individual level, we need to understand how our role as individuals has played in history, has played out in, in policies that are enacted today. We wanna to understand as a community, how we can make better school, school um, food systems, how we can impact um, local buying decisions. These are big things that impact our local communities. And then at the more systems policy level, how can we be involved in the farm bill, in like federal food policy and start to get better at connecting, um, you know, not just voting with your fork, not just focusing on how an individual can make better buying decisions, but really thinking about systems change, really equipping communities to be change makers and really involve um our neighbors, our friends, our community, in thinking about food at a, at a more systems level. So with that, I thank you for listening to my um, introduction here. I would welcome any questions. You can either put questions as we go into Miro, if you're comfortable with that, or in the chat, or just write them down and hold them for the breakout um, meetings, either uh, breakout rooms. Um, Next, so so we're going to talk about four things next. We're going to talk about Terra Madre, um, which I, I know is on everyone's minds. Bilal will talk about that. Then we're going to talk about advocacy. My colleague Brian will talk about that. We'll talk about education with Dan and um, Dion, and we'll talk about bio, biodiversity with Mara. 
So Bilal, welcome. Bilal is a new co-chair along with Laura Luciano of the Soul Food USA board. He's also um, the international counselor, newly uh, welcomed into the international counselors. So I will turn the floor to you, Bilal. Thank you so much, Anna, for, uh, for the introduction and for framing out our evening tonight for State of the Snail. Um, Welcome everyone. My name is Bilal Sarwadi, and I'm so honored to have been elected as your new Slow Food USA board co-chair, along with my colleague and good friend, Laura Luciano. I also uh, have the huge honor of being the representative for the United States for our International Council. And for those of you who might be new to Slow Food, the International Council is the advisory body to the International Board. And we're also uh, the strategic planning body for the entire global network. Uh, composed of 30 members, uh, we have great representation uh, and we are so excited to collaborate with all of our international partners for all of our plans for the coming year. Uh, before I go on, I wanted to introduce the board members who are on the call. Uh, board members, if you could use the reaction function to raise your hand. Uh, so I can see who's here and so I can introduce you. Uh, hi, Katie Mosen Wadler. Good to see you. Hope your family is doing well. Tiffany Nirenburn, uh, Laura Luciano, uh, Jalene Russell, welcome. I know. Uh, hi, Carol. Uh, I think you're uh, part of one of our boards as well. And I also know that Shilu is on the call. I see Kevin Mitchell. And I believe Josephine is also on the call. Uh, so we're so excited to welcome our Slow Food USA board members. I also see we have some local chapter board members as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. So Terra Madre, uh, we are all super excited for Terra Madre this year. It will be held in uh, Torino, in Turin, Italy, uh, in September, and for those of you who may not have heard, this is the 20th anniversary of Terra Madre for us. So we're really excited and we want to have a really big North American presence uh, in Italy this year. Uh, the delegate process, I really and highly encourage you to engage with it. Uh, applications will open on Thursday, February 1st. Uh, all delegates will get access to panels, roundtables, and networking spaces at the event. You'll also have an invitation to participate in the Slow Food USA national meeting uh, and the booth. Uh, we're really excited about our North America booth this year. Uh, in years past, um, some of you who may have been to Terra Madre, the United States presence and the North American presence has uh, somewhat gotten lost in the crowd. And to keep that from happening this year, we're partnering with uh, Canada and Mexico um, to create like a North America booth, uh, which we're really excited about. It's important to showcase that we are a global movement. The fascinating thing is that the work you do locally affects the work that happens internationally. So it's important to show up and tell our story and build relationships with other delegates. Uh, we are going to work with Slow Food Canada, as I mentioned before, Slow Food Turtle Island uh, Association, uh, chapters and partners, Slow Food Mexico, uh, to create a beautiful and big booth. Uh, the booth is going to be a place where we can showcase a lot of our products. We're going to have a central place to convene and also a place to rest. For those of you who have been to Terra Madre before, it is a huge event. And sometimes you need a moment just to remove yourself from the crowd, chat with a few friends. And we're hoping that the booth will be that this year. Uh, you can register or apply to be a delegate. We'll have a small number of sponsor delegates. And again, I'll mention that February 1st, applications will open and Slow Food USA will send out a notice to the network. Uh, we haven't had a booth in, in the past, but since we're working really strongly to build relationships with other delegates, we will definitely have a booth this year and a great presence. Uh, we can't do this alone. Uh, I know, I on the board need your help, the staff need your help, and we want to make sure that chapters are engaged. And we'd love for you to pledge your financial support this year and commit to being able to raise whatever amount of money that is significant for you and significant for your chapter. Uh, that funding will then allow us to send a large number of delegates to Italy who will then be able to take those stories back home and reinvigorate their chapters uh, for the coming year. 
And we'll move on to another really cool thing that's happening in Sacramento this year. Uh, from May 17th to 19th, our international partners were able to secure funding to create uh, this really neat inaugural event for Terra Madre Americas. So think of this as kind of like a preview for Terra Madre that will happen here uh, on our own shores. Uh, this will happen on this year. It is happening pretty soon in May and it'll be the same year as uh, Terra Madre, but then moving forward, it'll be every alternate year. So any year that there's no Terra Madre, we will have a Terra Madre Americas. So this inaugural event, uh, think of it as, as a preview, will be a gathering of food producers, eaters, farm workers, scientists, slow food leaders, cooks and researchers that will meet in Sacramento for the first time and will discuss the intersections of climate, social justice, and education in the food and beverage in industry. Uh, we'll have a lot more information coming out soon about that. So just uh, save the date, May 17th to 19th. This, think of this event as a great alternate. If you're unable to go to Terra Madre, uh, consider um, making your way to Sacramento and getting your chapters to help raise funding uh, to get a few delegates out there. Uh, programming will include uh, workshops from the Slow Food Coffee Coalition, Slow Food Wine Coalition, will include territories of Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, there'll be a food and health education area as well and a leader gathering with uh, Eddie Mukibi, who is our new Slow Food International president. Uh, additionally, we will be able to build relationships with slow food leaders and producers from Latin America and the Caribbean, further strengthening uh, our North American presence. And understand that this is just the beginning. The idea, again, is to gather in the off years of Terra Madre, and we're really feeling very energized about this. Uh, logistically, we will weave together network leaders in California and the West, uh, and we'll build um, kind of like from the ground up for, as a grassroots coalition, uh, some really amazing programming. We'll tell the story of Slow Food in California to attendees and also invite them to engage in local activities and call to actions. So if you're in the West, if you're in California, please uh, keep your eyes open for more information for Terra Madre Americas. Um, that will do it for me. Does anyone have any questions at the moment? And we'll also have opportunities in the breakout rooms to uh, discuss further. Uh, I just posted mine in the chat. I really oh, want to learn about the Slow Food Coffee Coalition because we have a coffee oh. uh, company here who is really interested in engaging with that group. Oh, amazing. Angie White, is that right? Yes, we're in Shreveport, Great. Louisiana. Great, I will make a note of that so we can connect you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, well, thank you for giving me space tonight to chat. Um, oh, go ahead, Lorraine. Yeah. Uh, yes, hi. Um, I just want to clarify, are you uh, are you the person that's working on uh, the Terra Madre participants for Slow Food USA, um, putting out the, the uh, application and making the decisions and things like that? Because we sure could use some advice with that for Slow Food oh, sure. Turtle Island Association. So if you're not the person, maybe you can point me to the right person so we can get that uh, going very soon. Uh, Anna, who is the point person for that uh, on your staff? Um, so Dion and Mara and I are heading up the Terra Madre lead. But Great. Lorraine, I think you would probably contact Elisa directly. For those of you who don't know, Lorraine Gray here is um, coordinating Slow Food Turtle Island Association. Lorraine, thank you for joining us. And we're really excited to partner with you at Terra Madre. And I think for the delegate specific question, Elisa would be your best, or Elisa or Francisco, I think would be your best bet. Oh, really? Well, I was thinking more in terms of like the logistics, like how do you have a place to go on your website where someone can click on it and make an application? And is that something that we could borrow from you to put on our website, which will hopefully be up in a week? Yeah, 100 percent. Kinds of let's, let's let's connect later, Lorraine. Absolutely. We I think okay. what okay. we did last um, last time in 2022, we can basically repeat. It, it worked pretty well. Okay. Okay. I no, I don't want to take up a lot of time with this. I just while uh, while I while I had you all here, I want to make sure that I'm not you know I'm um, Anna and uh, Mara. I'm always leaning on you two to for advice, and maybe you're not always the people, and you're just too nice to say, well, go talk to this person instead. So <laughs> no, we got to you, Lorraine. 
We're big fans. Okay, so whatever we can you. do. <laughs> You're great, Lorraine. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bilal. Uh, thank you, Lorraine. Of course. Appreciate I'll pass you. it back off to Anna. Uh, okay. Thank you all. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all at Terra Madre at either one. <laughs> So I, I suspect there's a lot of questions and feedback and ideas. So tuck those away or put them right on the Miro in the Terra Madre area. And during the breakouts, we'll talk through um, all of that. This Terra Madre Americas event is coming up. It's going to be big and it's going to grow. So we're kind of piloting this year and um, it'll get bigger with the Slow Food International Partnership um, coming up. So exciting. Okay, we're going to move on to advocacy. So let me introduce Brian Solom, our Director of Communications. Hey, everybody. It's so great to see you all, and I uh, hope you're having a good evening. Um, so as we know, in order to achieve good, clean, and fair food for all, we must make major changes to our food systems and the laws that govern them. As activists and disruptors, it's our responsibility to persuade the people in power to take bold action and make our foodways more locally focused, more environmentally sound, more racially just, safer for workers, and ultimately more delicious for all. Uh, so let's talk about Slow Food USA's advocacy pillar. This year in 2024, the biggest opportunity we have to shift our food systems in the US is the estimated $1.5 trillion farm bill. This legislation determines who grows our food, what's grown, how it's grown, and most importantly, who has access to it. Now, despite the myriad challenges the Farm Bill has had and likely will have in this out of the ordinary congressional season, uh, we must work together to persuade our elected officials to pass an equitable and just Farm Bill. Now, beyond the Farm Bill, we at Soul Food USA are also following a number of marker bills, uh, which are smaller laws that we hope will be folded into the final Farm Bill. Uh, there are about a dozen that Soul Food USA follows. Uh, some of those bills support local food purchasing, uh, from local farms and farmers, uh, support small-scale ranchers and meat processors, uh, improve credit programs for farmers so that we can lower the barrier to access in this industry of farming, uh, and increase uh, funding for programs that help families thrive, like WIC. We're also monitoring legislation and actions to protect waterways like Bristol Bay in uh, Alaska, uh, to stop wasteful practices by big fishing companies, and ultimately support sustainable fishing and seafood practices from coast to coast. But how will we work to see these bold and transformative food policies enacted? Well, in 2024, Slow Food USA is investing in our greatest asset, our chapter network. We're equipping six pilot chapters with the tools and support needed to energize their networks around the farm bill and food policy. Uh, those chapters, which include Atlanta, Chicago, Denver, New York City, Philadelphia and Santa Fe were chosen because they're constituents of key players in the House and Senate Agriculture Committees, which draft and advance the Farm Bill and a bunch of other really critical food and farming legislation. So over the year, um, they'll get trained up on grassroots organizing, learn about food policy issues, and then connect with their networks to uh, help them take action, meet with legislators, and explain why we need to slow the fork down when it comes to food systems. Uh, we're also mobilizing our entire network of members and activists on Wednesday, May 22nd, for a virtual advocacy day in honor of the International Day for Biodiversity. Uh, we'll hear from food policy leaders and legislators on why it's so important to share our stories to inspire changes in our food ways. Uh, we'll also explore how we can advance biodiversity at a systems level. Uh, got a little echo there. Uh, and also help activists across the nation reach out to their elected officials as a unified slow food voice. Uh, so please stay tuned on how you can take action. Uh, I wanna pause here and just express my immense gratitude for our volunteer led food and farm policy team, uh, which meets twice a month to guide our policy and advocacy work as Slow Food USA. Uh, I see a number of you in the, in the audience. I really appreciate all that you do. Um, they set priorities for us. They provide updates, create great content and offer opportunities to take meaningful action. So huge thanks to all of you. Um, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, one person on this team in particular has been leading a project to transform food and nutrition policies in school districts. Uh, over the past several years, Cynthia Walters, who I see here, hello, Cynthia, has developed the Slow Food USA School District Wellness Policy Toolkit, 
which offers a path for any slow food activist to make a difference in the food and nutrition programs at their local schools. Uh, the toolkit offers guidance on joining a district wellness policy committee, uh, suggestions on language to incorporate into a wellness plan, uh, and tips on how to fund new initiatives uh, that support improved food programs. Uh, the toolkit will be launched in partnership with Whole Kids Foundation in early autumn and rolled out over the next couple of years through in-person and virtual events. Uh, this project excites me because it intersects a number of Slow Food USA priorities, namely school nutrition, school garden education, and local food procurement. Uh, so we're super excited to watch this toolkit lead to more nutritious, local, climate resilient food and cooking practices at school districts across the country. Uh, I'm so excited to chat with you all in the break breakout room and learn more about how you want to get plugged into food policy and advocacy. Uh, but now I'm going to bounce it back to Anna. Thank you so much, Brian. Brian has really taken the lead here with policy and it's exciting to see how chapters can rally behind these specific calls to action and have a united voice, like you said, Brian. So thank you so much. Again, just a reminder to please put any comments or questions either on a sticky note on your desk or in the mural board so that we can come back to any questions that you have about each topic as we go. Now I would like to turn it over to Dion and Dan who will take us through the education pillar. Dion is the director of network engagement and Dan is our equity, inclusion and justice strategist. Thanks, thanks y'all. Awesome, thank you, Anna. And again, thank you all for being here. Um, I'll try to keep mine quick. Uh, so as Brian mentioned, uh, we are doing a lot of work at the federal level and at the local level in terms of policy change. Uh, and in addition to that work, there is a ton of opportunity for change uh, at a level that's even more local than that at the community level. Um, when I think about that sort of thing, I have oftentimes think about like voting with your dollar, buying locally, buying organic, and which is incredible. Uh, the thing is, though, that oftentimes individualizes uh, the experience within the larger food system. Uh, the thing is, though, uh, what we want to bring to the network this year is this uh, concept here that you see in front of you is the slow food exchange. Um, as much as we spent money at our local um, food producers, that impact and keeping the dollar within the community uh, can be expanded upon and multiplied uh, by bringing those folks within our local food systems together. Uh, thank your restaurant owners, thank your chefs, thank your farmers, your local folks within the fishing industry, um, even the livestock industry. All opportunities to really amplify uh, that local dollar uh, staying within the community. And that is exactly what the Slow Food Exchange aims to do. Um, what it is, it is a, a bit of a framework uh, so it is an experience, a forum, uh, as well as a public facing event uh, that happens in one day. And the idea is to connect all of those parts within the food system that may not have gotten into the same room with one another uh, to really create those relationships. Uh, as Anna mentioned earlier uh, in the conversation, um, we spoke about our theory of change. And one of the roles within the theory of change is... Uh, we are weavers and we'd love to be able to weave those relationships uh, within our very own communities uh, to create larger food systems change. Uh, last year, we piloted a few of these events, uh, one in Philadelphia that I got to attend uh, and one in New Orleans uh, later in the year. And yes, the content was incredible, uh, but the most important part of that conversation was really seeing chefs talk to like food producers within the system and walking out, exchanging phone numbers, exchanging cards and being able to connect with each other and support one another in a very genuine and, uh, and unique way. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'll end up sharing my screen, showing a, a quick snippet of what happened uh, in New Orleans, uh, which was an incredible event. And hopefully the audio transfers. Thank you. 
Yeah, so that was uh, just 18 seconds of what was an incredible experience uh, down in New Orleans. Um, a lot of the team uh, that some of the team that went to plan that event is actually in this room tonight. Mara saw Kalas in the video um, and a handful of other folks within the network. And this is something that we will, if you're interested, um, please reach out to us. We'd love to connect with you on it, uh, support you. There is some funding to hope to help host this event. Um, and yeah, really excited to, to really weave more relationships in 2024. Um, and one more thing for me is uh, this idea of a leader portal. Uh, it's something that we've been working on for quite some time, and we're really at a point where we're excited to bring some content towards you uh, for, uh, during this year. A lot of it to be educational, um, from slow food history to how slow food works in the U.S. now, uh, to filing your taxes, which is kind of boring, but it's also nice to know how to do that. Uh, so you'll be seeing that uh, roll out later this year. Uh, we'll also dovetail that with a walkthrough of how to connect with each other, uh, as I already saw some of you doing in the chat um, with Slack. We'll do uh, walkthroughs, tutorials, uh, and I promise you it's a little bit easier than uh, hopping into things like Miro on the fly. Um, but if you have any questions, please jot it down in the chat. Uh, but yeah, really excited to to bring you some educational pieces this year. And I will pass the mic over to you, Dan. Thanks, Dion. Um, it's so awesome to see so many familiar faces here and hi to folks that I haven't had the chance to connect with yet. Um, another key ingredient to success for slow food groups is leadership. I think that goes without saying, we call you all our leaders and we look to you for so much leadership throughout our network. And so I'm really excited to be able to offer to cultivate this community of practice, the Leadership Incubator, as an offering for slow food groups who are really looking to reinvigorate their chapter. Um, as we know, COVID was challenging, leadership transitions are already hard enough. So this is really an opportunity for six to eight leaders to get together for an intentional six month community of practice style cohort um, that meets for about two hours a month to really collectively problem solve, get to build strong relationships with each other and cultivate your own personal restorative leadership skills, cultural capacity, and design a flexible strategic plan that will support your chapter's unique needs. We've been experimenting with groups like Chicago and San Diego over the last year and have some really amazing resources to share with you all and work through over that six month period. We're looking for groups who can really commit to that um, span of time and be really intentional with their engagements with us because we are trying to build long-term relationships so that you all can continue to support each other throughout the network. Um, and while all of that is happening, we of course are using our theory of change, as we mentioned before, as a basis for all of that strategic design work. Um, you can apply, we're gonna share a link with you to our website where you can get more information, but applications are open for the next month until February 29th. Um, I'll let you know no later than March 22nd if you'll be joining the cohort. And then we kick off in April and that will take us all the way through to Terra Madre. So super, super excited to get to work um, with more groups, work with more people in a one-on-one -on -one intimate setting. And yeah, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm boiling over with excitement and it's gonna be a lot of fun of course, reach out with questions. And I look forward to sharing more in the breakout group. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Dan. Dan had an amazing um, engagement with Slow Food Chicago, helping them with a strategy, a strategic plan. And we're like, how do we do this over so many chapters? So this is our solution to bring a small group of together, really focus relationship building, strategic planning um, period. So thank you, Dan. Okay, Mara, I would like to plan it to uh, toss it to Mara. She's the director of programs for Slow Food USA, a Vermonter, and I'll let you talk about biocultural diversity. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, team. It is so great to see everybody here. I just, you know, you if you know me and you've hung out with me in the past, a phrase that I love to say is, I love the opportunities to get my slow food vitamins. And I feel like Terra Madre is one of those. Meeting in person is one of those. And then also when we gather at the state of the snail, that's another time to get our, our slow food vitamins. So I hope you're getting excited about all the things that we're sharing today. Um, 
biological and cultural diversity are sort of where the rubber meets the road for me in my engagement with slow food. As a farmer, I found slow food through seeds and through the Arc of Taste. And we had a big year last year with the Arc of Taste book being launched and with all of our work around plant to seed. And it's been so heartening to see so many chapters starting to embed plant to seed in their actual programming on the at the grassroots level, at the chapter level. And it's been fun to develop some of this, um, the programming aspects of plant to seed. And I, as I develop this program, I think about all the chapter leaders out there and what you would like to do and how you would like to engage with your communities with seeds and diversity and biodiversity. So um, I, I welcome any questions and ideas. This year, we, you know, we've had a lot of fun moving to a single crop um, as the focus of the plant to seed campaign that has become a year long campaign. Um, we started with beans in 2022. We went to greens in 2023. And this year we're building soil with uh, grains and roots. And the theme of the plant to seed campaign this year is ground yourself. And we're building soil with grains and roots and showcasing you know, the incredible diversity in those two groups. And then also, um, we're going to be using a few of those crops to showcase in the seed summit. So um, the plant seed campaign, mark your calendars. The kits will be launching on Valentine's Day on February 14th. Um, every year they sell very quickly. So uh, within four weeks or so, we usually sold out. We produce 800 kits every year with 400 being purchased and then the other 400 going directly to um, school gardens. And on that date, we'll also have a way for you all to, um, if you're a part of a school garden or a community garden, to um, sign up to get a free kit on that day as well. Um, so plant a seed is very exciting this year. I have another date for you, which is the seed summit. We are going to be, we skipped last year and we're back in it this year. I see a lot of my seed people, um, have joined us today. Thank you so much for coming. We have arc of taste leaders and people involved with seed helping to, um, create a seed declaration. We've been working on this for a few seed summits. So we'll be um, sharing a draft at the seed summit in March. The date is March 1st and 2nd. Um, and the theme of the Soul Seed Summit is also ground yourself, seeds and systems change. And we're gonna take um, a couple of the roots and a couple of the, the crops from the kit and do a deep dive on um, corn, wheat and sugar. There'll be a sugar beet in this year, year's kit. So we really wanna examine how these foods affect our soil health, our nutritional health and our planetary health. And so with both of these campaigns, we're gonna lean into nutrition, which we haven't really done formally in the past. We're really excited about that. Um, it's gonna be very interesting. I have a lot of ideas about um, particularly doing a nutrition challenge and then also maybe doing a cooking challenge with grains, how many, um, incredible grains can you get into your diet in a certain amount of time I'm developing these ideas right now and to that end I have a little poll I would like to toss to the crew here let me see I've never done a poll before so let me see if this works um okay I'm launching a poll I have a cons an idea of doing a grains and glucose challenge this year as part of the nutrition um for most of us have someone that has, you know, diabetes and blood sugar issues have touched our lives. So I would love everybody to take a moment and um, take my little poll to see how many, how many folks would be interested in doing a challenge. It would be two weeks long. You'd get a continuous glucose monitor and a diet to follow. This is my idea right now. I'm just developing it and looking at for a little bit of direction and what people would want to, um, how they'd want to engage with it. So uh, thank you for taking my poll. I'll leave it open while I finish up my slide. Okay, so those are the two big biodiversity things. Um, the other biodiversity thing we've been doing a lot of work with is slow fish. I see my colleague Collis uh, Stoll in the chat, uh, in, who's attending also. We worked very closely this past year to create 10 um, events at uh, five different locations, um, digging really deep with sustainable seafood programming. And we're bringing that all home back to Charleston this uh, fall, November 1 through 3. Um, we'll be in Charleston doing, and leaders will be um, welcome. We're going to do a sort of a leader summit track, sort of like a leader gathering alongside a slow fish gathering. Um, 
what we're trying to do is recreate our slow fish gathering that was going to be a regional um, a regional leader gathering as well as the slow fish summit in New Hampshire in 2020. So what we're trying to do is recreate that, but this time in Charleston, um, which was one of the sites of our rising tide events this past year, very, very strong chapter there is going to be hosting us and everybody's invited to come to slow fish Charleston, November one through three. All right. So those are some of the you know, the, the ways that we uh, lean into our biodiversity work here with Slow Food this coming year. Um, and also we have the cultural aspect of our communities that we engage with. Um, we've launched a couple of affinity groups since, really since Terra Madre 2022. So we've been engaging with these two communities for a couple of years. Um, and we have the BPOC affinity group and the LGBTQ2S plus affinity group. Um, and I have Dan here, Dan, would you like to talk about the BPOC Affinity Group real quick? Yeah, so we had our inaugural meeting in person at Terra Madre and kind of used that momentum to catapult us into our 2023 year, where I believe we met 10 times last year. And um, really, we were trying to figure out what our intentions for the group were, how we wanted to spend our time. Um, last year, we focused on celebrating and sort of like collaborative problem solving and just holding space for each other. This year, we have are taking a little bit more of a focused approach. So um, we're going to have some sessions on, on policy. We're going to have some sessions on snail of approval. We'll sort of highlight different themes throughout each month. Um, so please get in touch if you would like to join our listserv and get updates. And we even have a WhatsApp group where folks can chat about certain things like foraging or recipes. So just trying to create those additional touch points for our BPOC leaders in the network. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, and Brian, would you like to speak to the LGBTQ2S uh, affinity group that you've been uh, heading? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so very, very similar trajectory as Dan described for the BPOC affinity group. Um, we had our first gathering at the beginning of 2023 after um, an inaugural uh, LGBTQ2 Spirit Plus Summit in Terra Madre in Torino. Um, and we've largely been focused this year on building connections across a global queer slow food uh, community. Um, we are also reaching out to other queer food groups that exist in the world to understand how they operate and how we can together work uh, toward our collective liberation. Um, our big project for 2024 is, um, you may not be surprised to hear, planning uh, our presence at Terra Madre Salone del Gusto. Um, we're hoping for um, a, an impactful, inclusive, and joyful time for the LGBTQ2 Spirit Plus attendees uh, at the event. So um, yeah, feel free to uh, reach out at uh, brian at slowfoodusa.org if you're interested in joining. Um, we also have a Google group where we uh, connect and meet on a monthly basis. So yeah, we'd love to grow the group. Thanks, Dan and Brian. I appreciate your leadership there. Those are the main um, biodiversity components for this year coming up. And I thank you so much for taking my poll. More data will be coming about all of these components. I just wanted to give you sort of the heads up that these things are coming down the pipe. Um, and I saw a comment in the chat about when does the Seed Summit go live? And I think it probably is going to go live tomorrow. Is that right, Brian? All right, amazing. So stay tuned, everybody, for all of the amazing seed work to come. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Mara. <clears throat> Y'all, we just threw a lot of information at you um, with stuff we've been thinking about and planning. And, you know, not everything is at the same level. Some are like with one chapter and some things are with another chapter. So um, I'm excited to do our breakout groups now and see how your chapter and you want to connect in and hook into these programs or what else you're doing. What questions do you have for us? It is 9.30, it is late. Thank you all so much for joining us, sticking in there. We will send out an email with a bunch of links and information and all the things. Um, but any last words? Yes, thank you. Um, why don't we've done this in the past. Everyone unmute, let's embrace some chaos and just say a nice big slow food goodbye to everyone. Goodbye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Nice to meet Thanks, everyone. Good. Good to see you, Jarena. See you all later. Bye. <laughs>
Bye. Bye. Bonsoir. <laughs> See you in Italy. Yeah. And Sacramento. There we go.